Blog Talk Radio. Smith, this is one child to be survivor to another restoration, and I'm glad to be here tonight. And I missed my show the last weekend, and I had to reschedule. Sorry about that. <laughs> it seems to be a bit of a routine I'm going through. Um, so yeah, it's really uh, I do apologize. It's no fun showing up to a show that that's not there. And I do every now and then because I'll be tuning into somebody else's show here on Blog Talk Radio, and you know you're waiting and they're not there, and you're like. Are they coming? Are they going to be on the air? You know, it's really frustrating. So I am really sorry. I do apologize. But I'm glad to be here tonight. It is uh, Sunday night, and October the 6th, 2019, Calgary, Alberta, same same place, a <laughs> different time. And I'm trying to find a good spot for this show because I've had to move it around. That's kind of why I had to reschedule because um, I've had to sort of move things around a little bit. But I'll find a spot eventually. And what we're doing is we're looking at finishing up a, uh, an article about healthy boundaries. You know, what are healthy boundaries and that we should set health, have have these boundaries in place, right? And how to do it and, and uh, what we need to do. So this is all from Havoka, H-A-V-O-C-A, Havoka, Help for Adult Victims of Child Abuse. Um, that's their, their information from their website. It's a great website. Go check it out. And um great resource for adult survivors of child abuse. So, yeah, I'm glad to be here, and, you know, as always, I always tell people if you're a survivor and you're just starting your healing journey, you want to just make a, make sure that you're safe enough to be listening because, you know, information like this of any type might trigger you, cause you to have a bad night, you know, you might hurt yourself or somebody else, and these things are difficult to deal with, right? So if you're not sure, you know, you know if you're just starting out in your healing journey, and you're not sure how far along you are and whether you'll be safe enough to listen on your own sort of thing, um, you know, turn the show off and go get that information. You can get it from uh, ASCA Adult Survivors of Child Abuse and Morris Center Program. They have a Survivor to Survivor workbook um, that I'm always talking about because <laughs> I'm a volunteer with the ASCA. And um, that's a great workbook. And um, in it, the one of the first chapters, I guess the first chapter is Safety First. And it does give you the information, um, a good little bit of information there to sort of help you to know whether you're safe enough, right? And um, if you're anybody else, you have to listen at your own discretion because I'm talking about abuse. And it, abuse is a very sensitive topic, and, you know, you need to make sure that you're making the right choice for yourself. So do, it's ultimately up to you. <laughs> so, you know, you make the right choice for yourself whether you should be listening or not. So we'll get into this. We're finishing up this article, and this is the Healthy Boundary Stuff from Havoka. It's under, what tab is it? If you go to Havoka, H-A-V-O-C-A dot org. Look under their survivor tab. It's under personal boundaries. And then this last section is called negotiation. And we almost covered it and all but one little last piece that we'll finish up tonight. So I'm not, you know, you can go back and listen to the last show and where we left off there if you want to catch that. But in the last several shows, we've been working on this for months and months and months. So <laughs> it's been a long time. And but I just thought it was really worth looking at. Personal boundaries, they say, how to maintain them. So this is what we're going to talk about tonight. 
and also affirmations of your basic rights. And I think those are going to be helpful for us to look at. So thanks for joining me, and I appreciate everybody who's taken the time to listen to my shows. You know, I've done so many shows, it's just ridiculous. Um, you know, <laughs> I had no idea how long I'd be doing these shows, and it's, you know, years later I'm still doing these shows. And um, I do appreciate everybody who's tuning in, you know, and I hope that you're getting something out of them. And at least my main message, you know, not, don't give up. Just keep looking for whatever helps you, you know, whatever resources you can find, you know, whatever support group, counselor, therapist, you know, whatever it is, get some help, you know, don't struggle on your own. It's terrible, terrible to be struggling on your own with this. I know because I did for many, many years until I started reaching out, right? So that's always been my main message. And uh, so, yeah, I do appreciate you taking the time to listen. There are quite a few people that do listen to the show, and I don't know who you are, and I appreciate it. And like I said, I hope you're okay and that you're getting help for, you know, if you're a survivor or, you know, if you're just someone who knows uh, someone who's been abused, you know, a supporter of a survivor, um, you know, I hope you're getting something out of the show anyway. I know that I do because I'm working still always on my healing journey. There's always something that I need to work on. So I'm sure I'll be working on this the rest of my life. You know, I always thought, well, you know, how long does this take? It takes as long as it takes. You know? um, and there's these little issues that come up and show me that I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> it's like, okay, I still have work to do. And um, so that's why I keep maintaining this healing journey. But it's good because I'm working through things, right, it's little by little by little. So I'm in a lot better place than I ever ever have been even with the passing of my husband, which was absolutely horrific. And, um, you know, all sorts of things going on in my life. I do have a sort of a center of calm um, and peace within me because I've made so much progress over the years um, just in, um, I guess, uh, self-awareness, you know, the realization that I am strong, I can do this, I can reach out and get help. There's crisis lines if I can't cope. There's people, you know, that I can turn to. I've, I've got sp- uh, things in place, and that's really why I do these shows because, you know, just to be a voice of encouragement for people out there, if you're if you're a survivor of abuse, you have to set these things up. And as much as it's uncomfortable, it's not fun, you know, people are busy or they're tired or whatever, and it's stressful dealing with this stuff, you know, having to face the abuse and face the aftermath. Um, but it's really important to get these things in place. I, I have a couple of support groups that I actually can attend at any time if I want to, if I'm just having a hard day or a hard night and I need support, you know, I can make sure that I'm at the next support group meeting, you know, and just to get help, right? Because um, so many times, you know, we're on our own in this and not, we don't have people to turn to. So there's support groups, they're very helpful. You know, if you have a counselor or therapist, that's great. Just whatever works for you, you know. Um, so it is, it's, it's good to, to keep going and, and just keep reaching out, right? So we'll pick up here, personal boundaries, how to maintain them. So this person who wrote this article says, um, that we need to ask directly for what you, for what you want. This shows who you are to others. Ask directly for what you want, because it shows who you are to others. That's good if you know what you want, (laughs) you know, we first have to know what we want and what, what we're going to allow in our lives, you know? And that's like saying, okay, I'm, I don't want abuse, and I don't want to be treated um, abusively by anybody. So if you know, we have to ask directly for what we want, and then show, and that that shows to, uh, you know who we are and what we're made of to other people around us, right? Um, it's important. And as abuse survivors, you know, survivors of abuse of any type, um, we we were never allowed to stand up for ourselves and stand up for our needs and set those boundaries. Boundaries are broken in abuse, and that's the issue. That's the problem. And if you grow up in that, you know, then, no, you know, there's the whole idea that really, where do you learn these healthy boundaries? You know, you learn them, you start learning them in, in you know, if you live in, in, you know, some people who grow up in homes where there are healthy boundaries set, you know, they're not having to learn this stuff at a later date at the age of 40 or 50 or whatever. Um, it's tough, right? So we have to go through and actually learn how to do this stuff. The next thing they put here, these are like, um, you know, sort of snippets. Uh, we've already gone through the articles. This is the last part of this art, the last part of this information, which I think is really helpful. They said, nurture yourself and your integrity. 
This creates an inner intuitive sense that lets you know when a relationship has become hurtful, abusive, or invasive. So nurture yourself and your integrity. Absolutely, you know. I mean, coming from abuse, you know, we do need to learn how to nurture ourselves and how to, you know, how to be good to ourselves and to make good decisions on our own behalf. That's a big issue. Um, and 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 nur- just self nurture. I had to learn how to do that. I'm still working on it, you know. Um, I, I forget to do a lot of things that I that I should be doing, you know what I mean? To to self nurture, and sometimes it's like, oh yeah, I guess you know I've been putting a lot of things off, you know. And it's like I've just never was used to getting any nurturing at all. So um, it is important to do that, absolutely. And be objective about others' behavior towards you without getting caught in their drama. So, you know, if if there is somebody in our lives that their behavior is making us uncomfortable or, you know, whether it's abusive or just invasive or hurtful or whatever, you know, we don't have to be caught up in their drama. We can be a, a outside of that, you know what I mean? And that's important to not get drawn into um, someone else's drama, right? And I, you know, I mean, I've seen... Uh, Facebook posts and stuff because I have I have a lot of Facebook followers and people will say you know I'm not into other people's dramas and stuff like that. Not everything is a drama, right? It's just that when you do run into somebody who is creating drama all the time, you can tell, right? It's it's obvious and it's kind of like you don't have to be caught up in that. That's their own problem, right? And why you know why we shouldn't take it on as part of our own issues. You know what I mean? Uh, it can be difficult, though, because coming from abuse and trauma, where there was a lot of drama, <laughs> uh, survivors of abuse can easily get caught back up into that. So we have to know and, uh, you know, be aware of that kind of stuff around us, right, with relationship stuff. They said maintain a bottom line, a limit to know, a limit to how many times you will allow someone to say no to lie to you, to disappoint you or betray you before you will admit the painful reality and move on. Maintain a bottom line. A limit to how many times you will allow someone to say no, to lie to you, to disappoint you or betray you before you admit the painful reality and move on. I guess to say no, I mean, people have the right to say no to certain things. You know, it's the issue of lying. I mean, that's, you know, people shouldn't be lying to, you know, especially friends, you know, or relationship stuff, partner, husband, wife, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Um... You know, you want honesty from these types of people. And even, you know, people like your bosses. Bosses, it's uh, my boss. You know, I would want my boss to be honest with me. You know, they would want you as an employee to not lie to them, so why they would lie to you, you know. People don't always treat people the same way that they want to be treated. And that's just a fact. Growing up abused, you know, that's pretty obvious. Um, How many times we would allow somebody to do these things to us? I think, you know, for me, I had this issue of cutting your people off immediately um any offense at all (laughs) without already setting boundaries it's kind of like okay you're gone because i was like nobody is going to abuse me i'm not going to take abuse from anybody that was my thing you know and i was for years and years and i mean I look back on it now and some of it not wasn't necessarily abusive behavior it's just that i i just didn't like something about the way they said something to me or whatever, you know, and I become extremely, um, I'm almost kind of too rigid on that end. I mean, I cut people out of my life really quickly and I've lost some good friends over the years because of that, you know, (laughs) and it's like, and it's my own issue of, you know, trust, right? I've just, you know, like everybody else, we've all been hurt. Everybody's been hurt. I don't know how a person could be on this planet Anybody, even wealthy people, people that you would think would never have any problems, everybody's experienced painful situations, right? Everybody's been hurt at some time. And so, you know, it's not just abuse survivors who go around, you know, saying, oh, I'm not going to allow anybody to hurt me again, right? I mean, people have just been hurt, right? The issue is, is I started to realize, like, hey, I'm not perfect either, man, and I make mistakes. And if I've done something to hurt somebody, I really try to make it right and... Because that's what I would appreciate from somebody else. I'm more apt to give somebody another chance now that I'm older, you know, than when I was younger. Because I'm not perfect. I want to be given another chance. You know, I make mistakes. And 
I don't want people to be that rigid with me. Oh, you made a mistake. You're out. You know, that's, that's harsh, right? But that's what I used to do to people, and, I've, and I catch myself still doing it even, you know, last year, right, at, at this age. And it's like, okay, I really need to get a grip on that, you know? Not everybody's out to get me, and not everybody's out to hurt me, right? Um, that's just that whole horrific situation of being abused so horrifically as a child, and I don't, you know... That little person inside of me still sometimes, that little inner child that I, the several of them that I have there, want to run my life, you know. And I'm the adult in the situation. <laughs> it's like, you know, I'm running the show now, you know. They're not supposed to be running the show. The younger wounded parts of myself are not supposed to be making these types of decisions. Um, but I do need to protect myself. But that doesn't mean cutting every single person off just because I don't like something somebody said or yeah, I don't like this issue that came up, you know. We just need to state our needs. We need to, first of all, know what our needs are and then make sure that people around us, if we run into a situation where something's happened, it doesn't matter what kind of relationship it is, working relationship, you know, personal, family relationship, whatever it is, and someone's done something that's crossed the line and crossed the boundary, you know, our boundary, whether we've said it already and actually let them know ahead of time what that boundary was, sometimes that doesn't happen because we didn't realize we had the boundary problem with you know an issue there so we may have not said anything right but technically you know if those boundaries are crossed you know then we can we should know that we have the right to tell that person that they've crossed a boundary that was very important to us and that you know we so 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 they're saying here we got to set a limit make a bottom line you know how many times are we going to allow somebody to cross these boundaries you know, whatever the issue is, it's not just about saying no or lying to you or lying to me or whatever. It's it's anything like that. Um, you know, it depends on the situation. As far as abuse goes, I still say, and I'm adamant about it, I will not let anybody abuse me in my adult life ever. I mean, I had to take what I took from it as a child, but I'm not allowing anybody in my adult life to abuse me. I refuse. <laughs> it's like, no can't treat me with decency and dignity then you just got to go um i just have no toleration for that and that's good i'm glad that i'm like that um but in the meantime you know i have to learn how to set these proper boundaries and not be so rigid that i cut my good friends off just because you know, i didn't like something that some interchange between us or something you know people do you know say things that were a little hurtful or something but it doesn't mean that they're trying to be abusive they just slipped up and it's like i've done it myself so this is the issue just have to be careful about maintaining these things you know and make sure that we're not being abused not being taken advantage of not being hurt and betrayed over and over and over again that's just allowing you know the abuse to continue on years later and it's like no i don't i'm not doing that you know i'm very very solid on that and i'm glad that i am like i said because that shows me my integrity. That shows me who I am. You know, I'm going to treat people with decency and respect, and I expect to get that back. And if I don't, well, <laughs> they're kind of gone, you know, especially after I ex- tell them or bring it up, you know, and make sure that they know. Then it's like, okay, no, you really are gone, you know, and that's just the way it has to be. You, I think it's a guy who wrote this article, but I'm not sure. It says, change the focus of trust from other to yourself. Don't put yourself in someone else's hands or expect infallibility. Trust that you can allow others to be normally human and still have satisfying intimacy. So change the focus of trust from others to yourself. Don't put yourself in someone else's hands or expect infallibility, like that they're that they're they're not, that they're perfect and they shouldn't ever hurt us. You know, people hurt people. That's all there is to it in any situation, and um, that's sad but true. But we all make mistakes, and like sometimes people hurt people on purpose. Those are the people you want to get get out of your life, right? Those are the people who have no business in my life. I don't allow people that hurt people on purpose in my life at all. If somebody can hurt, hurt I mean, I've hurt people, you know, m- mistakenly done stupid things that have hurt people, said things, done things. And I've realized it, and I'm like, wow, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I really need to apologize and make that right, you know. I really try hard to be a good person on the planet just to to not hurt people and to be a good person. But not everybody's like that, and a lot of people are out there to hurt, and, you know, people that are, oh, have issues, you know, and maybe just abuser types, you know, I mean, whatever 
beady, whatever. They might have psychological problems. They might have mental problems. They they just might just be a mean person. I don't know. You know, I mean, there's just so many types, right? But, um, you know, we can't trust everybody. You can't. I mean, I can't trust everybody. You can't. People are going to, you know, there are good people out there, but they're not perfect, like they said. You can't expect them to be perfect, and that's that's where my rigidness as far as that kind of stuff goes. I I want a second chance. I want to be, um, you know, able to apologize if I've crossed a boundary and make it right. I don't want to be cut off that quickly, so I have to be careful then not to cut other people off like that. So I'm learning over the years how to do this stuff, but it takes time because we don't always run into these situations, you know. And then when we finally do, it's kind of like, oh, I see what I've been doing, you know. But until we run into it, we don't know. It's like when you make a mistake, that's how you learn, right? And so, you know, I've made many, many, many mistakes (laughs) through the years. (laughs) I'm not even going to go into them all. It would take me like 30, 40, 50 shows, you know, Uh, (laughs) just to get started. Um, I've made mistakes. I'm not perfect. But one thing I do is I care, you know, I'm a caring person. I really do care about people. And I'll do the best that I can to help somebody and be a good person to somebody. But, man, if I don't get something back like that, <laughs> they're not welcome around me. Because I don't have time for people that just want to hurt me and take advantage of me. Or, you know, just they're just not welcome, you know. Because I'm going to be good to, to, you know, whoever's in my life. So I expect that back, right? And I think that's really important. Affirmations of your basic rights. This is the last part of this article. And let's just see how many minutes do we have. About eight minutes, so we'll we'll boogie through these. No, nobody has the right to know my mind or my business or to tell me what to think, what to feel, or what to do. That's absolutely true. This is an affirmation that we can say to ourselves. Nobody has the right to know my mind or my business or tell me what to think, what to feel, or what to do. That's very true because we don't have the right to do that to somebody else. I don't have the right to go tell somebody you know, what to think, what to feel, what to do. Um, So nobody has the right to do that to me either, right? I have a right to my own thoughts, feelings, values, and beliefs. That's very important. Um, Because abuse, you know, survivors, survivors, especially of child abuse, growing up in abuse or, you know, actually abuse of any type, domestic violence, doesn't matter. Um, You know, we didn't have the right to our own feelings and thoughts and beliefs and values. We didn't have the right to anything. So um, that's why it's very important now to understand that we do have rights, right? These, uh, Havoka had a Survivor's Rights Bill of Rights that we went through a long time ago, and you can find it on their website. It's called Personal Bill of Rights. It's really interesting. These are sort of similar. It says, what I share with others about matters that concern me is determined by what feels right to me, not what they want. That's true. See, we do, we have to set these boundaries, right, of what we're going to allow um, other people to expect from us, right? And, you know, what will... What will be dealing with, right? But if we don't think about this stuff, we'll, we don't know, right? It says, if people are abusive or disre- disrespectful to me, I have a right to tell them so, to ask them to stop and to avoid them. That's a huge issue because even uh, bosses can be, dis- you know, sort of disrespectful and abusive. And, you know, that's that's a boss, right? You want to keep your job. <laughs> I actually leave my jobs. when If I run into an abusive boss, I, I just leave because I can't be bothered to try to change somebody who is chronically mentally ill, you know, because that's what that is. People that could try to control people through disrespect and abuse, there's a problem there. I don't want to work for somebody like that. I go find another job. You know, I'm like, no, it's just not worth it to me. I have run into a lot of really deranged bosses over the years. I've also had some really cool bosses. And those ones, I always tell them, you know, when I'm working with them, I always make sure that I tell those people just how much I appreciate them and what they've done for me and what they've meant to me, you know, um, because they're so few and far between. And the other ones I just leave. <laughs> like, goodbye, good riddance. I, I just can't deal with people that are take advantage of and oppress people. I can't say, because I was abused as a child. So I, as an adult, I'm like, look, I have no interest in working for you. <laughs> Goodbye. That's just how I am. I I like people who treat people with just with with respect and dignity and care and I expect that and that's what I give, see? So if I don't get it that back, I'm like, "Goodbye." That's that's me. 
I don't have to be nice to people who aren't nice to me. That's very, very true. And I don't need abuse or to be disrespected. Absolutely. These are things that we can go and say to ourselves. I don't, you know, I don't need abuse or to be disrespected. Right? And we need, to, we need to get that sunk right down into our very core so that when somebody does become abusive, we know that we have the right to say, no, stop, right there. <laughs> you know, it's not right for people to abuse anybody. And so, you know, that's why I keep speaking out, right? I'm like, I don't mind. I've got a voice. I got nothing else to do with my time. I can do this. I don't mind. Somebody's got to say this stuff. I have a need and a right to love myself, respect myself, and to stand up for myself. Absolutely. I have a right to be who I am and to harmlessly live my own life regardless of whether others don't like it. That's very true. So many people like to judge, you know, and we all do. I mean, I don't know if there wouldn't be one person on the planet we could say, maybe there's somebody out there. I don't know who it would be. <laughs> somewhere on the planet who doesn't judge somebody, somebody's lifestyle or their life, right? We all do it. But the thing is, is to remember that we're all different and we all want, we all have different wants, likes, needs, you know? And I try to remember that about people around me. I don't try to push my stuff on, you know, oh, well, you need to do this or you should do that or, you know, whatever. It's like, you know, live and let live, right? I mean, as long as they're not hurting, you know, me or somebody else, it's like, so like they said, I have a right to be who I am and to harmlessly live in my own life, right? It's very, very true. I don't have to feel guilty or for not behaving as others might want me to or for not giving um, others what they expect of me. I don't have to feel guilty for not behaving as others might want me to or not giving others what they expect of me. That's true because some people's expectations are pretty high. <laughs> It's kind of like, hey, I can only do what I can do. You know what I mean? Um, I think as long as we're doing the best that we can, we can sit there and say, yeah, I, I don't feel guilty, right? There's no guilt involved. Um, but then we need to turn around and treat other people the same way, right? Uh, I accept myself just as I am at the moment with whatever thoughts and feelings I have. That's a good one. Here's one. I accept my right to my imperfection and shortcomings and don't feel guilty for not being perfect. You know, this is true because it's funny. I mean, I mean, I've made mistakes. Everybody has, and even in the workplace, you know, done things, made mistakes and stuff. And it's funny that so many people, especially bosses and stuff, will come down hard. You know, to be like, <laughs> kind of like, as if you're supposed to be perfect. But what's funny is I talked to a job coach one time, and they were like, everybody makes mistakes, including those bosses. <laughs> but they, they're not going to tell you about that because they want you to think that they're perfect, <laughs> right? It's everybody is imperfect and has shortcomings, right? So we all do, right? So I can accept my right to my imperfection and my shortcomings and not feel guilty for not being perfect. I'm not perfect. I didn't grow up into a, in a home where, um, like some people who are abused have that situation where if they just did everything perfect, you know, they could avoid some of the abuse or... If they were a perfect child, you know, maybe their parent would love them. So, you know, they become perfectionists, right, as adults, trying to be perfect, right? I've never been like that. So I, just, I haven't even tried because it's, uh, for me in my situation, it's just not going to work, right? Here's one. This is the last one. I believe that if I am true to myself and live by the highest truth I know, that things will turn out for the best in the long run. And that's true. Be true to yourself, right? We have about a minute left. So if I'm true to myself, you know, and, and keep that truth and work with that truth throughout life, right, things will turn out for the best in the long run. And they will as long as we keep working on it, right? So, you know, I have about a minute left. Um, we'll be back on to this. And I just want to tell you, you know, if you're struggling and you're, you know, you have no idea what you're going to do, reach out for help. There's so much help out there. NASCA has a phone list. You can call NASCA members, you know, for resources and get some help. You can call um, crisis lines. There's cri I mean, if I can't cope, I'm calling a crisis line. You know what I'm saying? There's help out there, right? But I do not give up, ever. Not ever. Because we deserve help. And we deserve to have a good life. We really do. And so, you know, if you're a person and you're sitting there thinking, you know, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Well, first of all, you got to get help. you got to reach out. So many times survivors of abuse, nobody knows. That, that, that we're dealing with these things. And unless we reach out, they really don't know. You know? 
And even if they do know, maybe it's not they maybe they can't help, right? So you need to reach out to somebody who can. That's the issue. So take good care of yourselves till the next time, and I'll be posting again soon uh, for uh, show times and stuff. So thanks so much, everybody. Take good care. Have a great night, and God bless. Bye bye.